Love for Guam is brought to you by Pepsi. That's what I like. <laughs> Off today, Guam. This is Oka Point. This month's Pepsi Pulse feature takes us to Oka Point and Tamani to meet Farron the Guam Guy Tyron. This is where the Guam Extreme cleanup crew took off, literally rappelling down the cliff. I thought it was very appropriate that we would start here at uh, Oka Point, the south platform specifically. This is kind of where uh, the Guam Extreme cleanup crew was born. I had this idea one day, it's like, you know, we got into rock climbing. Why don't we, you know, use it for something a little more? Why don't we get our gear? Um, and just do a cleanup because no one else can. Um, and maybe no one else has quite thought of it yet. Um, sh credit where it's due, there are others who clean the other side, um, just, you know, climb it around, but um, maybe not invoking all of the repelling and all the equipment that we do. And so I'm just like, let's just do it. We had a group of friends get together. We had uh, enough equipment and ropes between the, the group of us. And then it just kept expanding and expanding. We start do underwater cleanups. We'll do cleanups on the in the hiking trails. Get a two hundred dollar dolly. Bring out the refrigerators and stuff that's ditched in there. You can find him and his group of volunteers cleaning up trash all around the island, from deep underwater on hiking trails, beaches, and recently on a national platform. So this was with the uh, Planet Ford. This is uh, based out of the uh, George Washington University in Washington D.C. And so it was a competition for storyteller, storytellers and aspiring journalists. So people could put uh, videos together like I did, tell a story, or it can be written, or it can be multimedia. I went with, with uh, video because I don't have the patience for writing and uh, it takes a lot of uh, work and editing to put out something that you're proud of with writing. Whereas videos, you can kind of churn that out pretty quickly and pretty comfortably. Uh, so I made, a, I made an entry, was selected as a finalist. Didn't win, but hey, it was my first time. Uh, I think I did still pretty good anyway. And the story that got him to the finals? One of the uh, suggestions for topics that could be covered was public health and you know this was kind of fresh out of the pandemic and so when I work on things I try to have uh, maybe not a completely holistic view but a more holistic view where I incorporate different perspectives so we a lot of people uh, resource managers scientists kind of look at uh, climate as an as a standalone issue or in the environment as a standalone issue. But I'm like, guys, you know, if we want to do anything, we need people involved. We need everyone to be on the same page. We need everyone to care. And, you know, you can publish all the papers you want and it's important and, and great work. But if people can't read it, can't, can't find it, much less understand it, you know, we're not going to be able to make the change that we all want to see. And so I try to serve as that gap and my video, my entry, um, was kind of a summary of some of the things we're doing and the way that I'm trying to approach bringing community and conservation together. 
And while he's grateful for the opportunity to have his story on a national platform, he says at the end of the day, his audience is rooted in the region. You know, my audience is, is really the, the people of, of Guam, our, our people of our island. And also got a shout out to the Northern Marianas as, as well, of course. And so having local recognition, I feel like just is just a little bit more dear to my heart. Um, but of course, I'm not going to turn down opportunities and I will pursue opportunities to have a bigger, broader audiences and just show more love for Guam um, nationally or even internationally. Love for Guam is brought to you by Pepsi. That's what I like.